the 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 premise of this uh, presentation is really talking about the uh, steps that we took um, and some of the uh, investigation research that we've done um, to to overcome a, a problem that uh, many of you will recognize the fact that there is such a, a plethora of, um, of different tools for creating PDF these days. Um, and as a consequence, um, PDF files entering a workflow can vary enormously in the, um, in the quality of them. And um, the, what, this, what, we're, what I'm going to be talking about is how we have approached this problem. Um, from analysing PDFs for, for, for very simple, in very simple ways in terms of pre-flighting, um, but also how we can actively change them to improve their throughput through the RIP. Um, and well, let me get, let me get started, and we'll um, we'll see how it all how it all works. Oh, yeah, okay, that's me done already. <laughs> so just a very quick word on um, on global graphics. So Global Graphics is a software as a company that you may well be aware of. We're the um, inventors of the Harlequin RIP, probably our best known product. Um, but we have solutions for high-speed screening and uh, compensating for uneven ink distribution across an inkjet print bar, something called print flat. And, um, and I'm actually responsible for a product known as Mako, which is a powerful SDK for processing PDF and other PDLs, and um, we use this um, to interrogate and modify PDFs, and it actually forms part of the uh, the, the solutions and the um, and the work that we've done. Um, global Graphics is actually Global Graphics software is actually part of the Global Graphics Group, um, which now comprises a number of different um, companies. One of those is Meteor, and they de develop. Um, the electronics that drive print heads for um, um, for inkjet presses, and um, and then we've also also in the group is Hybrid Software that produces um, products which you which you may very well be um, be aware of. So that's enough bluff on the uh, on the advertising side. So, so the background to this is that in 2020, we launched Direct, which is now an award-winning class of print software that drives print jobs directly to the printer, uh, printer electronics, without ever touching a disk. The Direct proposition means that ripping and screening is done in memory from a source PDF, and, the, and therefore there's no need to waste time um, ripping ahead to disk. Um, and no need for huge image stores to hold, holding vast amounts of data. And but that poses all sorts of problems that we will we'll discuss. It means that we have to be sure that the RIP can keep up with the press. So we have to, we have to delve into this in, in a little bit more detail. And so um, I'll, I'll talk about that as we, as we continue. We've identified something that we, that we refer to as the, as the data rate barrier. What we've seen, and and as you will as you will appreciate as we go through this, um, um, Global Graphics is very focused on um, inkjet printing, and press resolutions are moving from 600 DPI to 1200 DPI, which actually means not twice as much data, but four times as much data. Um, single pass line speeds are, are reaching phenomenal speeds up to 300 meters per minute um, and print bars can be enormously wide to um, to print onto flooring and we do a lot of work with um, industrial um, and presses for printing things like ceramic tiles flooring that type of thing so the idea is to to ditch the disc um, avoid costly offline storage that may may in any case not be fast enough, but instead rip screen in memory and deliver to the uh, printhead electronics as I as I've described. Um, but there are risks to this approach. The thing is that you can you can run a job and you can look at the average speed, um, but one slow page could block the press could 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 hold up the rip. And, uh, and therefore starve the press of data. 
So it's it could be a risky proposition. Now the other the other um, um, market driver is the requirement for ever greater customization, and um, we're fully aware of this. And one of the things that we've developed, and you can you can download this from the uh, Global Graphics website, is a guide to creating and variable data PDF files that won't slow down the digital press. It gives you lots of hints and tips about how um, content should be created. And it's something that you could um, potentially share with, um, um, with people who are creating um, content that you're going to be printing. So let's, get, let's carry on and talk a little bit more about this data rate um, conundrum as we refer to it. So we've done a lot of work to actually investigate this and to see where the kind of um, pressure points come in um, in a rip um, um, when PDFs are ripped. So we've modeled different uh, GPU and CPU RAM configurations um, to understand how performance scales. Um, you might expect that you know you could just throw expensive hardware at the problem. Um, but um, our customers who develop DFEs and other, or other RIP integrations are also concerned about their bill of materials. So, you, so hardware is not the answer. And in any case, what you find is that there is a non-linear relationship between faster hardware and performance because other factors come into play. So what we have found, though, is that um, a faster CPU certs, um, suits processing a vector data, um, whereas faster RAM suits processing raster data. Um, and most jobs are, of course, <laughs> composed of both. So, um, so you have to balance those two. And we've also experimented with using um, GPUs, but unfortunately, when you're throwing around large rasters, the memory transfer um, between the CPU uh, memory and the GPU memory can negate the benefit of the faster image processing that a GPU can um, can offer. So th these are these are these are some difficult um, problems to to solve. The point is though that the underlying this is the need to identify and rectify, if possible, um, performance constraints that are imposed by the job itself. And I'm talking here about you know the the um, complexity of the PDF page. Um, and of course, how fast the um, the RIP can process that page to generate the raster that's going to be uh, sent to the to the print head electronics. So we thought about this, and um, one of the things we've kind of we've, we've we've come to realize is that what we were doing when we were um, examining PDFs is that we were we were pre pre flighting for a for a, a different, um, for different reasons. Um, many of you will be aware of this. In the early days of PDF workflow, the, the emphasis was ensuring the RIP would render the page as expected. And standards such as PDFX and the work that the uh, PDF Association does, um, all of that um, grew out of that requirement. Um, and we kind of take that, we kind of um, take that for granted now. Um, you know, most um, um, creation tools are able to to generate um, PDFX files in in different um, different versions, um, and um, the the need to um, um, to preflight for to ensure that the, the the page actually images correctly um, is much less than it than it than it want, than it once was. So our focus is really on on preflighting um, for for speed. So identifying where a job isn't going to rip fast enough. Um, and, and, and we do that by identifying potential rip bottlenecks. So transparency is, um, is a good example of a, of a rip bottleneck, um, particularly tricky transparency. Um, many, many objects laid over other objects that require the rip to do lots of different blending operations. And so we need to be able to identify those. Um, and ameliorate those in some way as well. We've also been um, researching how we can predict 
what the rip time for a given PDF would be. And I'll come back to this in a moment because it turns out to be an incredibly tricky problem. Um, many of you would agree that the easiest way to find out how long it's going to take to rip a file is to rip the file and time it. Um, but we want to try and predict that. And, and we've, we found some clever ways of doing that, but it turns out to be really quite difficult to do. The other thing is that we want to be able to apply optimizations. So this is, this is processing the PDF, but not going as far as um, actually ripping it to disk and doing all of the, uh, the, rip, um, um, and the rip operation up front, but rather applying some, some optimizations at key points in the file that don't compromise content integrity or output quality, um, but can ensure that the, the job can run at speed. And um, so we, we come up with a, with a kind of continuum of, um, of, of different approaches. So, you know, over on the left are the things that you probably don't want, that you want, that you want to avoid. You, you probably don't want to do nothing. I, I referred, that, referred to that as the fingers crossed approach, um, because that means you don't know what you're gonna get if you send it straight to the rip. The other way to completely eliminate that risk is to pre-rip the entire job to, um, um, to disk. But of course, then that takes up storage. And what we've seen in some cases is that even um, um, slurping the data directly from, um, um, from disk storage can sometimes not be fast enough to keep up with, with very fast presses. So we, we've, came up, we've come up with the, uh, a proposition that we refer to as streamlined. So it's optimizing for, um, for, um, for, for what we know about the PDF. So we start by examining the PDF to identify complex pages, such as the transparency I referred to earlier. Um, and in some cases, we may, we may choose to flatten that transparency. So you know, just rendering that page is much faster than rendering the whole job, um, but can keep the, um, the job um, capable of running, running at speed. There's also some generic PDF optimization, and there's a few tools that have appeared in the market um, in the last few years that really you know, are, are aimed at, at trying to solve this, um, this problem to optimize PDF in a very generic way. And I'll talk about some of, the, um, some of those um, some of the approaches you can take um, on in the next slide. And then we look at specific optimization, which is really um, identifying things that we can do to the PDF that we know will make the Harlequin rip in particular um, run more quickly. Um, so it might mean, for example, examining the PDF and figuring out um, applicable rip settings um, or, or doing something else. So let's look at a couple of those things. So on the on the generic side, um, one of the, one of the things that uh, that we that we learned early on, and many of you will be aware of this, is that in fact image down sampling. If you've got more more image data in your PDF than you need to actually rip um, and screen at a given line screen, then you're just wasting processing and you're just waiting processing time and uh, and storage so an image down sampling turns out is probably one of the most effective ways of uh, increasing rip, rip throughput without compromising quality so it's about you know knowing how the what the um and the purpose of the job um how it's actually going to be produced ultimately um and um and then down sampling that that image data in the P, in in situ in within the PDF, um, processing that PDF, doing the down sampling, so that when the job actually goes to goes to the rip, it will um, it will rip more quickly. The other thing that you can do as well is you can convert colors. So if you're using a a, a target color space, um, converting the colors, this could be images, vector art, whatever, in the uh, in the PDF beforehand. Um, that reduces the the work that that has to do. The thing the thing about these these approaches um, is that they do reduce the flexibility um, of the PDF um, to some extent. So one of the one of the advantages of of um, 
uh, for example, a PDFX4 over the PDFX1A, is that you can use transparency and you can identify a color space, whereas with, with PDFX1A, for example, you've got to convert to CMYK. So at that point, you've got to know something about um, the output um, color space that you're um, that you're going to be um, ripping to. Um, and whenever you make a change to a PDF, um, you know you're 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 potentially reducing the uh, the flexibility. But the way that we the the way that we see this is it's really about this is this is about a PDF that's in a job workflow. And this is something that we're doing to um, um, to improve the through the throughput when we actually get to the rim. Um, transparency flattening. Um, there there was a view at one time when transparency was introduced into PDF. It was absolutely necessary to um, to flatten all transparency that so there could be no risk of, um, of of something going wrong with a drop shadow or whatever it might be. Um, when the when the job is ripped, but we've all kind of grown up a bit more now, and um, and we're used to uh, trans um, to uh, tr transparency, and rips can handle it um, very efficiently these days. So there's there's no particular need necessarily to to flatten transparency, but there there can be situations where you do need to do it, as I've spoken to earlier, and. Um, I'll come back to a transparency in a second. The um, often present in jobs that have been combined together from multiple sources, um, rip throughput can be improved by removing duplicate images um, and duplicate fonts. We see a lot of jobs um, that where the where the um, um, the job itself has actually been just um, crashed together. Um, as quickly as possible from multiple PDFs. And so there are lots of duplicate fonts in there. Um, there may be multiple font subsets of the same font, and there may be missing fonts as well. And you want to sort that out before um, before it gets to the rip. Um, and, so, and so that's an important thing that, um, that this, this optimization, the streamlining needs to be able to do. Um, you also need to think about um, X objects. So a lot of um, modern creation tools, um, things like InDesign in particular, come to mind. We'll use X objects when they write um, when they write out the PDF. Um, it's certainly true of Harlequin. It's true of other Ritz as well. They can cache X objects. So an X object is is kind of a wrapper. Could have an image inside it, but it could have a lot of other um, complex um, um, content in it. But if the rip can um, can rasterize that X object, it can reuse that raster again and again and again if it's repeated on several pages. So um, 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 Harlequin is particularly good at this. We have a, a system called HVD that does all of that stuff, um, and uh, you can learn more about it in our um, in our full speed ahead um, document. So definitely get there. So, but one of the things that we can do is we can look at content um, and we can hash images, for example, to find out whether that image is the same image as we see on another page, in which case we can eliminate the duplicate, create a reference to a single instance. That makes the PDF smaller, but more importantly, it makes the, um, it makes the PDF more efficient when it goes through the RIP, because the RIP only has to rasterize that image once, and then it can use that um, cached image again and again and again, wherever it appears and throughout the output. And we also sometimes need to um, um, to optimize the output. In fact, you know our, our technology kind of does this by by default. So compressing object steam, streams, but also writing the output um, from the from the optimization process as efficiently as possible. So I've already talked about you know things like um, um, avoiding font duplicates and that type of thing. But it can really make a difference when the uh, when the job actually hits the rip. And then in our um, you know streamline technology, which is part of the uh, um, the direct um, proposition, um, we do some things which are very specific to to the Harlequin rip. So we analyze the PDF, 
um, and we get a feel for what the what the job is. Um, sometimes there may be some um, some operator intervention, but the the idea is that we can actually choose some rip settings um, based on what is in the PDF. So to do with color, um, and I can't I can't think of good examples right now. And the other thing is with with transparency. So we've 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 built some capability to both do raster based transparency but also vector based transparency as well and um, sometimes we find that converting um, um, transparency to a vector based transparency um, can improve the uh, the rip throughput um, but there is a um, um, there's there's a point at which if you're doing vector based um, um, transparency flattening, you're generating too many objects, and in which case the um, you may be better off um, 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 doing a rasterized, a raster-based um, transparency flattening. Again, it's transparency flattening can be useful um, for improving um, throughput because you know it means that all of those blending operations are done as part of the flattening process. And then all the uh, RIP has to do is kind of slurp up the uh, image data. Um, but um, that, that process can also take time and, and it commits you to a certain, may commit you to a certain resolution. So it makes the, uh, the job potentially and, and to a particular color space. Um, so it makes the job um, um, potentially less flexible in where you can uh, print it. And then the um, the other area that we've been looking at is that the idea of actually um, predicting end to end rip time, and I, I can't tell you how difficult this is to a uh, problem to solve, um, because what you have to do is well you have to do those operations there you to arrive at a reasonable estimate of how long a page will take to rip we have to assign weights to given operations and by operation I mean this would be a rip operation, so um, rasterizing, blending. Um, it, it requires then you to analyze the page, the page in detail, so you know what, what's actually there and what is, where it is in the Z order, and if an item is occluded, in which case you know the, the rip may ignore it, and you have to do a lot of analysis on the page, um, and then to um, and then to arrive at an approximation of how long all of those operations will take. And then you compare it to actual rip times. So you put the same job through Harlequin, measure it. Um, and then we've been using machine learning to, to train the model, um, adjusting the weights to iterate towards a more accurate op, um, approximation. And what you can see here in the diagram, the diagram shows the results after training the model. The y-axis is the predicted time. In seconds, the y-axis, the actual time in seconds. And the aim is to get a spot. Each spot represents a different PDF, a different test PDF, different requiring different um, 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 operations, image operations. Um, you want to get that, P, that dot onto the 45 degree line, which means that the prediction and the actual time taken agree. Um, the green area is within a second either way. So you can see that um, after training, we're able to um, get to some quite accurate um, predictions of how long um, the job will take to go through go through the rip. But as we um, develop this um, um, uh, this research and this technique, we're adding um, other operations into the model um, that the rip is having to do, and then suddenly it throws outliers, and we've got to figure out. Of why that is happening um, so that we can um, um, improve the model and um, with the aim ultimately of being able to um, get a reasonable accurate or at least be able to identify um, for a given PDF whether or not there's a risk of sending it to the press um, without um, either before or after doing some streamlining um, and in, in a practical sense, that kind of shows up in our um, 
in our smart DFE that, you know, literally, you know, it's just a, a traffic light system. Um, you know, the, the prediction says it's red, in which case the job will um, not keep up with the press. Um, amber, well, that means that, um, I'm sorry, green means that the job is good to go, obviously. And amber, well, there, there the operator has to get involved. He's got to decide, well, what do I do? Do I spend some time optimizing it and then reevaluating the uh, PDF? Um, do I send it to a rip ahead queue? So the other, the other possibility is that you do um, rip ahead. You send the job um, off, get rip it to disk, and then, um, and then send the job from the, from the disks. Or you dynamically configure the Harlequin rip in, in an effort to, um, um, to ameliorate the problems or just reject the job altogether. So that's, um, that's a, sort of a practical example of how, it, how, how this technology shows up in the, um, um, in the panel. And I think this is from our, our print operator controller app. So I'm almost at the end, you'll be glad to hear. Um, so we've been talking a lot about um, about optimizing PDF for, for one purpose or another. Um, at Global Graphics, our strategic focus is on print, um, but more and more on inkjet, or well, specifically inkjet, really. That's, that's kind of where our, um, our expertise is, particularly in conjunction with um, partners like uh, Meteor. Um, and we're continuing to, to figure out how we can identify jobs that won't keep up with the RIP um, for, a, for a given press conditions um, and then fix them automatically where possible. That's what the, uh, the Streamline thing is all about. Um, if you want to take this discussion further, then feel free to contact me. Um, and I do encourage you, if you have any interest at all in this uh, in the subject, um, to download our free full speed ahead guide. You can just go to um, the Global Graphics website um, and um, look for the link. Uh, you have to put in an email address, but we'll send it to you. But it's very good. It's written by uh, Martin Bailey, who many of you will know, who's our CTO, um, very active in the, um, in the PDF Association and in the, um, in the development of the of PDF standards. Um, and so it's well worth a read. So that brings me to um, um, to the end of my um, presentation. Um, so do we have any questions, Duff? Yeah, thank you. Thanks, David. That was a great presentation. Uh, just a reminder to those attending the this webinar, you can download David's slides from his presentation today from the handouts panel. Uh, so we, we do now have some time to answer questions, um, and I have a couple of questions here. You, you can still submit your questions for David through the questions panel uh, in the GoToWebinar control panel here. Um, do new, so David, do new standards such as PDF 2.0 and PDF X6 um, provide advantages with respect to the optimizations you've been discussing? Yes, they do. Um, the we the the interesting thing about the um, 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 and PDF X six and, and PDF two O that we've I think we've just um, um, I think we've just announced some some new support for PDF two in uh, in the Harlequin rip, and we've been supporting it in our in our Mako technology for some time. So the thing about it is that the majority of the um, of the jobs that we see and the jobs that our customers are asking about um, are not PDF two right now. Um, I'm sure that um, I'm sure that that will change. Um, I'm not actually I'm not actually aware of whether the um, the creation tools things like um, InDesign and etc. are actually supporting PDF two. Um, as as an output format, um, mm -hmm. because it, it's really the the um, you, you know we we kind of feel that we're ready for PDF two, but our customers are not um, are not worried about it at the moment, and our customers are are, are um, 
you know, they're our, our customers are the integrators of our of our RIP technology, you know, the likes of um, HP and so on. Mm-hmm. So, um, so PDF two hasn't really reared its head in any significant way thus far, but we feel ready to um, um, we feel ready to 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 take that on. And I think um, Martin um, talked about PDF two in the full speed ahead. A document if, I, if memory serves so but uh, you know right now um yeah we we feel ready from a technology point of view for pdf2 but uh, you know our customers are not are not beating uh, beating down the door about it so that's 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 the truth mm-hmm. so are there um another question is so of these w- w- what are the areas in which future optimizations or future improvements in 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 uh in either rips or in in the, in the overall pipeline where are they going to come from yeah that's an that's an interesting one because one of the things that we one of the things that we we have a um um we we obviously have a dialogue between the the team that are developing the the streamline technology which is which uses Mako to to manipulate PDF content. Um, and then we're talking to the RIP guys and saying, well, you know, we know from our testing that when we put this kind of PDF or this kind of page construct through the um, um, through the Harlequin RIP, it's slower than if we do it some other way. But the and and so we then talk to the to the uh, to the RIP team. But their reaction is, well, what we need to do is speed that up. So, um, so it, it becomes a, um, um, it's what, what's the, I'm trying to think of a, of a good analogy. Um, it's kind of a, but it is, it's kind of a, um, it's kind of a race really. Um, so, you know, we, we identify some ways that we can optimize a PDF to go through the rip, but then they say, yeah, but we could do that in the rip. It would be faster if we did it rather than you did it. Um, and so there's a bit of to um, a bit of to and fro, but mm-hmm. we we feel strongly that the um, um, particularly for the um, and for the proposition for the direct proposition that I talked to, talked about back at the beginning of the uh, presentation, that it's really a combination of of approaches, um, being able to have um, fast um, processing and optimization of, of the PDF. Um, but also, you know, paying attention to um, to speeding things up within the RIP for things that are, you know, commonly encountered, um, and you know, finding new ways to to identify repeating content, to to cache elements, and um, that that we know are going to appear on every page, um, and you know, as our as our customers ask for, you know, more more capability to uh, to customize content. And that's really what um, inkjet printing is 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 about because you know every page could be different. Um, we've got to find we've got to find um, um, find that balance between those between those two approaches. But uh, we're 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 convinced that both are required. That we need to be able to um, um, you know pre-flight for speed as I as I spoke about earlier, um, but also. And recognise that we might need to do things in the uh, in the rip as well to uh, um, to speed things up. So it's a, a partnership between those two two approaches. 